turning driving time into learning time, turning off the radio, refuse to ever listen to music again when you travel. Just simply turn that car into a mobile classroom. So all the time you're in motion, you're learning. You're constantly feeding your mind with information that can help you. And finally, number nine, action orientation. Action orientation is our old friend, which we talked about before. Action orientation is really critical. All top people are intensely action oriented. They're in constant motion. So A, develop a sense of urgency. Develop a sense of urgency. Get on with it. Don't be like the average person who's always got a reason for not doing it now. B is um, become, become proactive in everything you do. Don't wait for things to happen. Make things happen. You know, people say, have a good day. Proactive. To have a good day, you say, no, make it a good day. You don't have a good day. Uh, f f grass that sits there and lets the dew fall on it overnight. That's, that's you know, having dew fall on you. But what you do is you make it a good day. You make things happen. And see, uh, you use what is called the momentum principle. The momentum principle is one of the most important of all principles for success. The momentum principle says that it's very hard to get started. It takes as many as 10 units of energy to get started, but then it only takes one unit of energy to stay in motion. But if you stop completely, like going on vacation for two or three weeks and come back, then it takes 10 units of energy to get started again. And many people never get started at all. So therefore, once you get into motion, stay in motion. Remember Sir Isaac Newton said, a, a body in, at rest tends to remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. But a body in motion tends to remain in motion in that, going in that same direction unless acted upon by an outside force. So your job is to develop momentum. Keep the plate spinning. Do something every day. Do something every day that moves you towards your goal. Even if it's just reviewing the goal, reading a chapter, reading a paragraph, making a plan, making a list. But every day do something that moves you towards your most important goal. Really important. And keep yourself in momentum. And now we all know that all successful people are constantly in motion. They're constantly doing something. OK, we're just about done. I'll give you my seven rules for success in the 21st century, and then we're on our way. Ready? Number one is your life only gets better when you get better. Your life only gets better when you get better. In fact, you can say that it's this, is this is, this is where you are today, but this is where you can be sometime in the future. And the only question is how. And the answer is knowledge plus skill. Learn and do. Learn and do. Now, there's sense, if, if, you're, if your life only gets better when you get better, remember, there's no limit to how much better you can get. Only you set the limits. You can continue learning and growing and getting better until your 80th and 90th year. Number two, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. All that really matters is where you're going. And where you're going is limited only by your own imagination. So therefore, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. Let the past go. All that matters is where you're going. And three, we say, we say here, anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. <laughs> now, this is really important to understand. I talked about it earlier. Anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. And usually, it's worth doing poorly several times until you master it. Major reason for success is people don't expect to do it perfectly the first time. I was listening to somebody talk just yesterday saying that it's not practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. Wrong. Nobody does it perfectly the first few times. You only do it perfectly at the end of a long process of imperfect practice. So it is imperfect practice that eventually makes perfect until you finally master it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to sound foolish. When I went off traveling to see the world, I could only speak English. And I learned French, Spanish, German, and smatterings of Greek, Thai, Chinese, a little bit of Russian, and so on. The interesting thing was I found in my, discover in my studies, the reason that Americans don't learn languages is because they try it once from their class in high school or from their phrase book. The person doesn't understand, so they immediately become embarrassed and feel clumsy and awkward and go back to sign language and pointing to phrases. Instead of realizing the first time it doesn't work, so you repeat it. And what I've learned over and over again is if you want to learn a language, you say it. If they don't get it, you repeat it again. And you keep repeating it till you get a glimmer of recognition. Yeah. The first one goes, huh, yeah, you want food, yeah, food, food, yeah, manger, food. Yeah. In, other words, in other words, you just keep doing it. Don't expect to do it right the first time. Once I saw that, I said, aha, you mean if you're not afraid to sound and look foolish, you can learn a language? Exactly. That was the key. 
From then on, I never had a problem getting a word or a phrase and trying it out. If it didn't work, tough. I'd do it again and again and again. Okay, number four, you're only as free as your well-developed options. This is one of my great and most favorite principles in life. You're only as free as your alternatives. If you have no alternatives, you have no freedom. If you only have one job that you can do and you lose it, then you're in des desperate straits. Half of Americans are terrified of losing their job because they have no idea what they would do. But every time you learn a new skill, you develop options. Every time you save money, you develop options. Every time you get better in your fields, you develop more options. I tell my kids all the time, the reason I want you to get a good education is so that you have options. If you called one of my kids, say, what does your dad always tell you? He always talks about options. Because options mean freedom is you're free if you can do lots of things. If you can't do lots of things, you're trapped. So whenever you have something going, immediately develop an option. Whenever you have an investment, think of an alternative. Whenever you have one skill, think of another skill. Keep, keep developing new skills. Keep expanding your options. Number five is um, um, within uh, the, every ad obstacle or difficulty, there's the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. It's one of the great success principles of history. With e in every obstacle or difficulty, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. In other words, look for the lesson. Look for what's good. Look for the uh, advantage or benefit in every problem or difficulty you have, and you will always find it. You can imagine that this great power that loves you has sent you every problem in your life to help you to be more successful in the future. If you have that attitude, then you have an attitude of gratitude. As you start looking at everything that happens that seems initially negative as being a blessing in disguise. <clears throat> Number six is you can, you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. This, by the way, was the great turning point in my life. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. And finally, number seven, the only real limits on what you can accomplish are the limits you put, place on yourself by your own uh, doubts and fears. By your own doubts and fears. Many years ago, Harry Houdini was the greatest escape artist in history. He got out of the most incredibly complex uh, lockups jails, sea trunks thrown into the ocean, handcuffs, straitjackets. He was even safes. He was, he was capable of getting out of anything. He was the equivalent of Siegfried and Roy or some of the great magicians in Las Vegas. And he was the world champion escape artist. And then he got a challenge. He was at the top of the world, like the top heavyweight fighter. He got a challenge from the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man, just off of the coast of England, had just built the most escape-proof jail in the world. They had used the most sophisticated locksmiths, the finest tensile steel, the finest construction. It was a brand new jail where they were going to put some of the worst criminals in the British Isles and they would never be able to escape. And so they issued a challenge to him across the ocean. At that time, a lot of competition between England and America. A challenge to Houdini to get out of this jail. And he had to accept it. There was a $50,000 prize put up, which would be the equivalent of more than a million dollars today. He had to accept it. It was put up. It's like a great championship. And they took him and they put him into this cell. Now, they stripped him down completely to his cotton underpants. And they said he had 60 minutes. It was a clock on the wall. He had 60 minutes to get out. Or he forfeited not only the million dollars, but his reputation as a great escape artist. So Harry Houdini's wife talked about this after his death. Harry Houdini had been a locksmith as a child and had, had developed a whole series of little tools that he used to get out of locks that he could manipulate. And he had developed a way of hiding that uh, set of tools somewhere um, uh, in his body. Um, <laughs> so uh, after they had uh, left him alone in the cell, he uh, got out his lock picking tools from his secret place and went to work. And he went to work and he said, this should be all right. He looked at the lock, it's fine, and he put his tools in, and he twisted the tumblers. It was a very sophisticated lock. Twisted the tumblers, click, ka chunk. The door wouldn't open. That's strange. So he turned all the locks back again, and then he turned, and he turned it again. Ka chunk. The door wouldn't open. And he did this again, and he did this again. 
And the time began to pass, and the clock was going ticking, ticking, 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes. He was perspiring. He was in a standing in a pool of perspiration. His hands were slippery from the perspiration pouring off of him. He was trying frantically. He had never in his life seen a lock he couldn't pick. And he was working on this lock and he kept working frantically. And the time was passing 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Everything, his whole reputation, all of this money, he was working on this lock. Ka-chunk, and it wouldn't open. Ka-chunk, it wouldn't open. Ka-chunk, it wouldn't open. And finally, at one minute to the hour, he realized he couldn't open the lock. And his heart sunk. And he was exhausted, pouring perspiration. And he just fell against the door. And the door just swung open. (laughs) It had never been locked. What they had done is they'd put him in without locking the door. And when he went to work, he naturally assumed that they'd locked the door. They'd rattled the keys in the door. So when he went to work and turned it, he had actually locked himself in. When he turned it back to neutral, he didn't know that it was neutral when he locked it again. He kept locking himself in. The door had never been locked. This is a true story. And he fell against the door, and the door swung open. Now, my point in telling this story, aside from the fact that it's true, is that your doors are not locked either. The greatest single obstacle to what you can accomplish in the whole world is between your own ears. And when you realize that those obstacles do not exist except in your own mind, your door is not locked either. Everything is possible for you. So go out and make this the best year of your life. Thank you very much.